What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about how we learn as fellows. For those who are unaware, I just started my spine fellowship here in Dallas, Texas, and recently graduated from residency. I've been getting this question a lot from different people and asking, hey, how's the Spine Fellowship going? How do you guys learn? Do you guys still take exams? Is it similar to residency? Is it different? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you all of those and address all of those things. So the way I would describe Spine Fellowship is that it is a continuation of learning from residency. And residency is a continuation of learning from medical school. Medical school is a continuation of learning from college. So it's a lifelong process where you're continually learning new things and you're reinforcing things that you already learned. So when you get to medical school, you will go over biochemistry, cell bio, physics, anatomy of the body, and you learn all these things, but you may have seen some of these things in college. Well, and when you get into residency, you're learning some similar things. You're reviewing some things that you learned in medical school. You're reviewing anatomy, histology, pathology, all these things that you learned, but you're learning them at a greater detail and more specific to what you, your specialty is. Well, and fellowship is pretty similar. Your learning is basically a continuation of things that you learned in residency. In residency, we had rotations where we spent two months with each specialty in pediatrics, spine surgery, and foot and ankle, hand surgery, trauma, oncology, and all of these rotations you spend a minimum of two months each year so at the end of your training, say for instance for trauma, we did 14 months total. So in fellowship, it's just a continuation of the things that I learned in residency in terms of spine, but a lot more complex and a lot more in detail. All of those rotations in residency that you do, you have to learn how to do hand surgery, you have to learn how to do foot and ankle, you have to know how to do a hip replacement or a knee replacement or a carpal tunnel release or excision of a tumor. These are basic things that you need to know to be a general orthopedic surgeon. But when you start subspecializing, and that's what fellowship is, you learn more in detail of your particular specialty. I have some friends that are doing joint replacement fellowships. So their entire year, they're gonna be learning how to do and deal with complicated hip and knee replacements. Well, in spine surgery fellowship, it's more complex, it's longer cases, it's the things that you will need to know to how to be a spine surgeon. So they're teaching you from the basics all the way up to the more complex things and you learn these things throughout the entire year. So some similarities between residency and also fellowship in terms of way we learn is that one way is that we still have lectures. So this fellowship here, every Friday morning there's a lecture series and taught by our spine surgeons here. At this particular group, there are about 20 spine surgeons. So lots of different ways that you can learn from these 20 spine surgeons that are here in terms of their knowledge. So Friday mornings, we usually have lectures that are taught by these spine surgeons and they can be going over cervical anatomy, how to do a physical exam on the cervical spine, how to perform surgery on the cervical spine, and to more complex topics such as deformity surgery when you're looking at sagittal imbalance, looking at the pelvis and the way it's aligned to the spine and how do you correct deformities uh, when this happens. Throughout the year, these lectures are kind of scattered in and they last anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. We also have what's called an interesting case conference, which means the surgeons are at this fellowship, they bring interesting cases or cases that they would like to get opinions from other surgeons that are in the practice and then they'll put up images, MRI, CT scan, a CT myelogram, and then they will ask the fellow, say, hey, what do you think about this case? What would you do for this? And then there's a discussion. So it's a really great and educational tool that we can use to further our knowledge and fill the spine. The other similarities are that uh, we still use textbooks uh, to learn. So the three ones that I'm currently using now 
is this spine book here. This basically goes over different procedures in spine. This is one in terms of more of the knowledge base here. So my plan is to read this at least twice throughout this year and essentially goes over different things in spine in terms of how to work up a patient who comes in with back pain, injections of the spine, uh, different uh, conditions. This is a chapter on trauma, the, the cervical, cervical spine here. So my plan is to read this at least twice and it's pretty good size book. I should have read this book at least once by December and then the second half of the year I'll try to read it again. And the other book I have is this uh, spine surgery book here. This is a surgical techniques book so it goes over different techniques in spine surgery, how to position a patient in surgery, the complications that can happen, the hardware that we use. So just like Redency, you can still use these books, but a lot more articles as well. We're reviewing the literature and research and what it means and what it says about certain spinal conditions. We still have cadaver labs and trainings where we practice our surgical techniques. We just came from Boston for a spine fellows course and I'll put that video right up here. We spent a lot of time with the cadavers in the lab practicing certain surgical approaches, certain surgical techniques to try to perfect them. So when we get into the operating room, we have a some kind of knowledge about what's going on with that particular surgery. So another thing that's similar is that we still have to give lectures. So in residency, I gave a lot of lectures, especially to the junior residents and medical students about various things. And in fellowship, we're responsible for giving two lectures. So I have a lecture that I am giving to the entire department, the fellows, the spine um, surgeons here, the admin staff, and I'll be giving that actually in about two months. And then I have another lecture I'm gonna give at the end of the year. And this is like an hour lecture where we can pick a topic where what we're going to be given. So mine is gonna be on cervical myelopathic patients. This means a patient has an injury to their spinal cord in the cervical region and it causes all different types of symptoms. The patient won't be able to close and open their hand really fast. They may have a abnormal gait, abnormal reflexes on exam. So it can cause a wide variety of different symptoms and that's what I've chosen to give this lecture on. The one main difference between fellowship and also residency and in terms of the way we learn is that we don't have any exams. In your residency, you will have what's called in-training exams. So every year we did ours as orthopedic residents in November 11th. Every single year, every orthopedic surgery resident took the same 80-hour exam. And you have to do well on this exam. Otherwise, you can be put on probation, you can have remediation training, you can have mandatory study. Depending on how poorly you do on this exam, you can also be held back a year. So it's a really important tests that we take every year while we are residents and the good thing is we don't have that in fellowship so I recently took my part one of my orthopedic surgery board exam and I'll put that kind of video right here but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to not having any particular exams this year and also the fact that I can just focus exclusively on spine Whereas in residency, I had to learn hand surgery, foot and ankle, know how to do a trigger finger release. I had to know how to do a carpal tunnel release, a cubital tunnel release, how to perform a bunion surgery, how to fix a fracture in the femur or the hip or the tibia. So lots of different things you have to learn. And it makes it more challenging to do that because you have so much to learn. Well, here in Spine Surgery Fellowship, I do have a lot to learn, but I can exclusively focus on the spine, which I'm extremely happy for. So I hope this video helps you guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.